Hey there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips, and welcome to another video. Now today I'm sharing how to create three different watercolor cards that are really fun and pretty easy. Now as I was creating these cards, I was really just playing around and kind of seeing exactly what I liked with watercolor. So I played with water brushes, and then I played with regular paint brushes, and then varying the amount of water that you add, and each one gives a really different result. So although I'm doing pretty simple watercolor in today's video, hopefully you guys can learn a little bit from the different techniques that I did, and I sped it up, but I tried not to cut it down too much so you guys can really see my process. So today I'm using the new Altenew watercolor set to do so. This has 36 pans in it. And I also wanted to share on the inside lid, I created a little swatch chart. I didn't share this in the actual video, but I created the swatch chart to match the colors that are inside here. So you can see exactly what it's gonna look like before you put it on your project, which is really nice to do and be able to know before you um, get started with your watercolors. So without further ado, let's jump right on into the video. Okay, so like I said, I'm using the new 36 Altenew watercolor set. Now I wanted to quickly share the packaging here because I thought it was just awesome and I'm a sucker for good packaging. So now when you open the set inside, I think they really did a good job at coloring, I mean, covering all the different colors that you might need. And if not, there's lots of different colors to mix together too. Now these also do coordinate with their ink pads, so when you lift them out of the little pans, they're labeled on the underside. So if you're a big Altenew fan, these will go along perfectly with your inks. So let's start off with the first card here. I was really just playing around with the amount of water that I used in these and the different effects you can get from using more or less water. So I'm using the Hello Gorgeous Altenew stamp set. Now I like this one, I'm using the little cluster of three flowers here. And I'm going to stamp those down using the Misty stamping tool and some archival waterproof ink. Now I'm gonna stamp this onto some distressed watercolor cardstock, but you can use whatever you have. I just simply use this because it's super bright white and has a smooth side to it too, so it helps with stamping. And even on the smooth side, I did go in and stamp it one more time just to make sure I had a nice crisp dark image. So it's nice to throw larger images in the Misty stamping tool to make sure you're gonna get a good impression. So once I've done that, I can start on my watercoloring now. You can see in this first one, I'm using a water brush for all my watercoloring for this image. And I added just a little bit of water down for this first flower and then activated that yellow color and started coloring in my flower. Now you can see that some of the water is kind of drying up as I add the color on and I didn't add tons of water to this flower. So you can see the color's not really moving or blending too much. It's kind of just staying in the same place. So this gives you a little bit more of a controlled effect but it also might be a little bit more difficult to create a blended effect since the watercolors aren't really moving on the actual image. So I'm throwing in a little bit of orange color there and then I'll take some water and mix them together. So that kind of helps blend it there and then I also went in and darkened some of that color. So I'm adding a little bit of darker reddish kind of purple shade here and I added quite a bit of water when I was adding this on to make sure that it blended really nicely. You can see I lifted a little bit of color there and then blended it together again with a little bit more water. So you can see I'm really working this one and really trying to create a super blended effect. So it does take a little bit more if you don't use lots of water, but it still does create a really cool effect in the end. Now for the second one, I started off with, I don't even think any water, and I just started adding that pink color down and then blended it out with a little bit of water here. So you can see that color really didn't move much at all. And then I added lots of water to this bottom portion after I realized that. And you can see that this color is moving quite a bit more and you can really see the color kind of flowing on the sheet there. Now I get a little bit nervous when there's all that water on there and so I blot it off a little bit, but you definitely want lots of that water there because it'll really help the image blend. Even if it might look like a hot mess in the, right, in the beginning, um, it does turn out really nice in the end. So you can see the colors moving quite a bit there and then I'll bring in some more water to kind of blend them together. When you're water coloring, water is your friend, not your enemy. Even though it seems like you have less control when you add more water, it kind of does the work for you, which is really nice. Now I'm throwing in a little bit of yellow there and then I'm just going to kind of stop while I'm ahead on that one. And then for this last one, you can see I added a huge puddle of color and I mean of water. And I thought that was gonna be a bad thing at first, but I brought in this orange color here or this kind of reddish color and you could really see that color moving quite a bit. Now it looks like it's not gonna create a, you know, a great effect in the end. And I think I might even have blotted it up a little bit after I was done, but I would definitely leave this. It doesn't look perfect right now, but um, you know, later on it dries and creates a really smooth effect since the blending is there. 
So yeah, I got a little bit nervous there with all that water, but it's definitely really great to have lots of water on your image to help it blend really easily. Now, even though I didn't add tons of water to all these images and kind of blotted them each time, you can still see that I got some good results in the end once they were dry, and I did use quite a bit of water on this one here, and that, you can see, made the blending quite a bit easier. So now I'm adding those green leaves in, and again, just adding a little bit of water and then throwing that green on top. For this, I didn't use too much water because I didn't want it to really bleed into the other colors, so I kind of kept it more controlled with these leaves. And then I'll throw in some darker color too, but I wanted to dry off my image first, and then I can create some more intense kind of shadows so that it won't really all blend together. So if you want to do less blending and give more harsh shadows, you want to dry it in between and leave that layer completely um, dry then while you're adding on your next color. So I'll blend that out just a little bit, and then I'm going to move on, I think, with an even darker color, and then I'll finish it off with just that darker shadow there. So once I've added that color in, I'm going to heat set that to dry it, and here is how my image looks. So I really like how this looks once it's done, and you can kind of tell the variations of water giving different results, but I think they all still turned out pretty cool in the end. So now I'm going to go right around this image with my scissors and cut it out with a little bit of a white border, and I'm leaving um, one side to be white too, so this creates a little bit of contrast when you add it onto your card. So I added it onto this Ocean Mist card base by Gina K um, using some foam tape, and then I'm going to use the Sending Love stamp. I think this is from an Alta New set, one of the ones that we used, and I'm going to just stamp that several times because I wanted a nice dark color so that the sentiment was really readable on there. And then I did cut this stamp in half so that I can put the love right beneath it and do that a couple times as well to finish off that sentiment and make it nice and dark on that cardstock. So this Misty comes in handy when you're doing this if you want to kind of intensify in colors like this. So here's that finished card. I really slowed it down here, but I really like how that watercolor looked, and playing with the different amounts of water is really fun to get different effects. Now this next one is a little bit more simple, kind of, but it does have lots of blending using lots of water. Now I'm using this Inked Flora stamp set, and I'm using that smaller flower down there, and I love this fun sketch look on these flowers here. I think this is really fun set to watercolor too, because those kind of sketchy looking stamps or hand drawn stamps make it really easy to watercolor and if you make a mistake it's no big deal. So here I'm taking two little um, cups here and I'm going to add water into each one and I'm using just a regular brush here. So instead of using a water brush, just a regular brush and this actually kind of helps with control. Now I've used a water brush for such a long time but I decided to kind of change it up a little bit and I really did like using the regular brush. It gives you lots of control, you're able to clean off your brush easily and then add lots of water too. So I'm going into orange here next, and you can see that those colors just kind of mix and blend because of all that water that we added on the surface. So for each one, I'm adding that color down, blending it out with a little bit of water, and then using that water to move and blend to the next color. So you can see it does create kind of an effortless and really smooth blend there. And the reason why I have two water cups on the side here is just so that when I dip into one, one is for cleaning out my brush, and then the other one is for clean and new water. And this just makes sure that I don't really contaminate the water and create muddy colors, and the colors stay really nice and clean this way. I accidentally dipped into the clean water a couple of times, but it still kept pretty clean in the end. So I'm going on into this blue here next, and you could really see how these colors are blending super nicely, and I'm not struggling as much as I was with the water brush. I have nothing against the water brushes. I've actually used them more than I have used a regular brush, um, just because I feel like they seem more controllable, but this is actually really nice with the regular brush and being able to really control the amount of water you add and the darkness of the color that you add, and you're really in control. You don't have to squeeze the brush here, so I really loved this experience, but I definitely still will use a water brush for sure. So I'm going to bring in a darker area of that red there. I wanted it to be a little bit more vibrant, and then I'm going to set that off to dry, and I'm going to move on to my leaves here. So for the leaves, I added lots of water too, and I'm going to throw down some green color here. You can see I dipped my brush into that clean water there, but it's not a too big of a deal. So I'm going to throw down a layer of that lighter green color, and then after I've done that, I don't think I heat set this one, I think I just went right on into the next darker green color. So it blended a little bit together, um, 
you can kind of see here that I'm adding a little bit of those shadows in there and creating that kind of depth and dimension. And the nice part about this set is it's really easy to do because they've got those sketched lines where the darker color should be. So wherever I um, laid down and that darker color was kind of around those sketched lines. And with that flower, I really didn't mind too much about shading. I was just kind of laying down some colors. So this one's kind of more of a fun than realistic card here. So I'm going back in over top of it. If you want to intensify the colors, most watercolors fade just a little bit when they're done drying. So if you want to really bring back some color and intensify it, you could definitely do that with another layer of the color here. So I'm throwing back in some yellow, green, and orange, and then I'll heat set that to dry it again. Now once I'm done with that, I'm going to cut this out right, among, or right along the edges. I'm using a little um, Fisker scissors here with a spring assist and cutting right along the edges makes it look really realistic and it kind of gets rid of that little border there. So I did like the look of this and then I went in with a black marker and went around the edges to kind of finish it off and add that edge to it to cover up that white outline. So it really just finishes it off. So after I'm done with that, I'm creating a background here. So I'm using some watercolor cardstock and throwing down lots of water and then I'm going to bring in this gray color. Now for this whole background, I'm using just this gray color. But you can see that since I'm using this brush, I get to really play with the intensity of the color. So you can see in some spots, I'm adding really intense color. And then in some spots, I'm adding lighter color and fading it out with lots of water. You can see this creates kind of a fun background. If you don't love it now, it might look a little bit kind of messy, but once it dries, it looks super cool. So I'm going to do this all along the card and make kind of a messy border along the outside. And then I actually did go into a little bit of a darker black color too. You could definitely just stick with the gray and get a really intense color like that, but I did want a really dark black in here too to finish off the background. So after that was all done, I made sure the background was super nice and dry. I'm going back into my palette here with lots of water and I'll drop it into the black and I'm just going to tap on some black splatters in the background. Now this is just a really fun effect. I'm kind of stepping out of my comfort zone with this card. Usually I wouldn't do a full background like this, but I really like how it turned out. So I cut down that background a little bit and added that big flower to the center that so really pops off that monotone background there. And then I'll use some collage matte medium to adhere these leaves flat on my surface here. So I'm just sticking them in the flower, cutting off a little bit of the leaf to make sure that it fits underneath the flower there. And then I'll adhere them down. Now with this leaf, I cut off quite a bit of the flower on one side, and this allowed that I was able to use and make it into two different leaves. So I added that all along the flower there, and then I used this large sentiment. I really love what this one says. It says, um, has someone told you today how awesome you are? And I really love that sentiment. Um, I think it's super awesome and encouraging for your cards. So I'm going to take that, cut it into a strip, and then I cut little banner edges on the outside and I'm going to adhere these down to the card with some collage matte medium, both sides there. And then I'm going to take my little sentiment strip that I had created with some embossing and I'm going to set that right over top and add it a little bit higher on the card. So this creates a fun little banner that you've created yourself and um, it looks really awesome on the card. So here's a quick look at that finished card. I really love the simplicity of it and just all those colors blended together using lots of water and a regular brush there. So now for this last card, I'm going to be sharing how to get some more blending and create another fun background with the watercolors. So I'm using this hibiscus bouquet set. It's an older set, but I really love it and have gotten lots of love with it. And now I'm going to just pull out a couple different leaves and flowers and stamp those down onto some more watercolor cardstock. And again, I'm using the smooth side just because it's easiest with stamping down. You could definitely use the textured side too, and you might get a different result with that. So I'm going in with the same two cups of water and paintbrush. I decided I liked that best for the most control. And I'm going to add a little bit of water down before I got started and then throw in some color here. So for the top, I'm using that yellow shade and then I'll blend it out with lots of water to make sure that it's nice and saturated still. And then I'll bring some pink into the bottom here. So you can see it kind of moving and blending up to the top and I'll even give it a little bit of help by blending those colors together with a little bit of water. And then I kind of threw in some other colors here too. I think I made it a little bit darker near this stem um, and added a little bit of orange and kind of reddish color into here too um, to kind of blend them all together. Now I could have just totally left it here, um, but I did add a little bit of shading and more brighter colors to this to kind of finish it off too. 
and I think it, all of it creates a cool look. You could definitely stop um, when you feel comfortable. Sometimes I feel like if you go out a little bit too much and kind of don't let the watercolor do its thing, you kind of get too controlled of a look and it doesn't look too much like watercolor, more as like paint. So um, I like my watercolor to be super free. So if it doesn't go completely to the end of the line or doesn't blend completely, I kind of like that look in fact. So I'm gonna add um, some kind of teal color to the center of this one here. And then I'll add a darker blue color right to the center. And then on the outside, I'm going to add a yellow color. Now this ended up making kind of a green in the end because it mixed with that blue, but I did like how it comes out. I really love those colors together with the pink and yellow too. So I'll add a little bit more water and that really helps it blend. And then I threw down a little bit of purple here too. And I blotted it off just a little bit, but I do love that effect of just adding a darker color to the center and kind of letting that do its thing too. Then for the leaves, I'm adding down a light wash of that lighter uh, green color. And then I'll go in and add a little bit of shading wherever those lines are again. And it just adds a little bit of depth and dimension to this and gives your watercolor, you know, a couple more layers to it. And again, if you want to dry it in between each layer, you can get a little bit more of a harsh look. And I didn't use too much water on these leaves, so they kind of blended a little bit more, or they kind of didn't really blend, they kind of stayed in place and had a little bit more harsh shadows, which I do like on these cards. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to go out and cut these right along the edge. Now I didn't use a black marker for this because some of those lines aren't really like finished and completed, it gives a really sketchy look. So I just decided to leave it white on the edges. Now for this background here, I'm using an Alta New um, background die, so this covers the whole card, and I'm just watercoloring right through it. Now this creates kind of a cool effect, because if you add more water to it, you get lots of water, and some of it will seep underneath the stencil, and if you add less water, you get that darker, more vibrant color, and none of it will really seep through. So I kind of played with the varying of adding more and less water, and more pigment and less pigment, and then I went in with a couple different shades of blue and did this whole stencil with those dots. Now it's also not going to be perfect um, because you're using a brush to go through it, but I kind of wanted that sketchy, more watercolor look because it is a watercolor card and it'll coordinate perfectly with those flowers. So then I went into a darker blue here and brought that color in. And again, with some of them I let it seep under the edges on purpose, and some of them I just made sure to leave it nice and dark and saturated. So then after I'm done adding all this color down onto the surface, this background top piece will be even cool to use on another card, but when you lift it up, you get that really cool look underneath, and again, it's got that really nice watercolor that's super organic, and in some places more concentrated than others, so it really, I think, creates a cool watercolor background. So once I'm done with that, I'm laying down all my flowers, um, kind of in the sections where I want to use them, and kind of making a little bouquet on the card here. So once I'm done with that, I decided I didn't want to really move these, I wanted them to be in the same place. So I'm using some Glad Press and Seal, and I'm just going to put this over top of my images. Now I've used this in the past for die cutting, I'll link the video on screen here if you want to see how to use it for die cutting, but it also picks up these fun little die cuts like this, so that way it makes them stay in place and I can use this to adhere it right to my card in exactly the same spot. So I'll add some liquid adhesive down onto those leaves, I'm not adding any adhesive down onto the flowers right away because um, I can add those right on top with some foam tape and dimensional. So I'm going to lay that down onto my card with those leaves uh, with lots of glue on them. And this will just make sure that instead of um, having to cut them down and add them kind of around the foam tape, I can just add foam tape on top of them and um, it creates a really similar effect and I can make sure the leaves are in the exact place that I want them. So I let that dry for just a second so it wouldn't pick up the leaves with it. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of foam tape onto these flowers, and then I'll add some liquid adhesive onto them too, to give an extra strong hold there. And then I'm going to just place this right on top of the leaves that we've already put down, and line it up, and then just press it down to make sure that it adheres really nicely to the card. So once I'm done with that, I'm adding this with some foam tape onto a craft cardstock base. And that finishes off that card. I added a sending love and hug sentiment and I really love how organic this one is with that fun watercolor background and those really nice hibiscus flowers. All right, so what'd you guys think? I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite from today's video. I would love to chat with you guys down there. 
And also, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to click that subscribe button and the little bell icon next to the subscribe button will make sure you get all my video notifications and never miss another crafty video like this one. I hope to see you guys very soon uh, in another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.